Hi, nice speaking with you today. We went through an incredible journey since uh, last crisis, uh, early 2009, through this uh, COVID crisis in uh, 2020. I will not come back to uh, the organization of value at that time, the fact that we were a very fragmented organization where we had absolutely no possibility of leveraging our organization. As a matter of fact, in the last 20 years before that time, all our customers at Chinese organization centralized their engineering and their purchasing organization, and we remained incredibly decentralized, like I said, fragmented. So we used that crisis at that time, uh, the financial crisis, to streamline our organization, and we did it extremely fast, uh, in less than six months, and uh, we had an organization where we could leverage our size. But that is not the most important. The most important is uh, the uh, analysis of our strengths and weaknesses, and the decision we have taken in depth of that crisis to move forward, and we had at that time the courage to invest in three directions. The first direction was Asia. Our sales were concentrated in Europe, were close to two-thirds in Europe, when the market was already more than 50% in Asia, mainly China, Korea, and Japan. And we decided to accelerate in those countries, which represent today more than 30%, 32-33% of our turnover. We became, thanks to our dedication to those countries, a true Japanese company in Japan, a true Korean company in Korea, and among all, a true Chinese company uh, in China. And China has become, today, our biggest country. And we are represented in all our four business groups in China, and sometimes with a very leading position. That is the first decision we have taken, investing in Asia and becoming a true Asian company. The second decision we took was to invest in technology. I don't consider today that we are automotive supplier. We are a technology company, of course, dealing in automotive business and having all the OEM, the car producer, as our main customers. And we did analyze the situation of strengths, and we had two incredible strengths. The first one is in ADAS, the safety uh, product, the driving assistance product. We had some components, uh, especially surround view camera and ultrasonic sensors. And we invested in those technologies, but not only in the hardware. We are today the number one in electronic sensors. Electronic sensors. We are the number one in not only surround view camera, but also front camera. And we are the number one in one very important component for driving assistance and for autonomous car, which is a LIDAR technology. But not only in hardware, like I said, but also in software. We have today more than 30% of our engineers are in the engineers which are in software. And when we project ourselves in the next five to 10 years, more than 50% of our engineers will be software related, architecture, software, and artificial intelligence. And we became number one in all the surround view uh, sensors, what I call the ears and the eyes of the car. That is the second decision we have taken. And the third decision is to go from traditional internal combustion engine to electrification of the powertrain. We had a Pearl uh, in our company, a product that he developed with a French company, the Peugeot Citroën Group, which called uh, stop and start. You know, when you stop your car, the engine stops. And from that product, which is based on the generator of a car, we develop a whole new technology, which is called today 48 volts, is mild hybrid, where from a non-existing market, we not only became from far the first player in the world, the leading company in the world, and projecting ourselves in 2022, from zero, we'll have around 1.2 billion 
of sales, and that is a fast growing market. Mild hybrid, but also uh, high voltage uh, electric cars in a joint venture we created together uh, with uh, the German company Siemens. And in a few years, we took 11 billion of order intake and became in a very complex uh, technology, the number one worldwide. So you see, uh, in depth of the crisis, analyzing our strengths and weakness, we have been uh, able to really enter or develop ourselves in the fastest growing market segment of the automotive industry. Asia, which is the fastest growing part of the world. ADAS, autonomous driving and uh, driving assistance, and electrification of the powertrain. In the post-COVID uh, area, the, what we notice today is the fact that those strategic choices that we have taken uh, are really uh, the ones which are confirmed uh, by the evolution of the market in the post-COVID area. Like I said, from a supplier of the automotive industry, we became a technology company. What does it mean? It means that uh, we absolutely need to have the right people. It's not anymore possible for a CEO of a company to embrace the whole technology. We need to have the right people. And I often describe my job as a discoverer of talents. We need the right talents. We need the right talents in our basis countries, France and Europe, but we also need the right talents in Japan, in Korea, in China, in the US, and in other emerging countries. That is the number one function. We need to have the courage to increase our R&D expenses, to develop those technology platforms that we have been developed over the last few years, and to invest, of course, in those fast-growing market. What comes next? If Asia is 32% of our market, it's already 55% of the worldwide automotive market. We still need to invest in Asia, in all the Asian countries. But we still need also uh, to develop all those technology, uh, which are not big uh, uh, commodity, which are real uh, technology embedded uh, in those uh, products. And we need uh, to invest in all the software, software architecture, artificial intelligence, and so on. So as you see, we have done an incredible journey over the last 10 years. But what we have to do in the years to come is as fascinating as what we have achieved in those last years. So thank you very much.